So let's start in TradingView, which is what I use for almost all of my charting. You can also use Transpider. There's a bunch of great software out there. I've got Roku pulled up and we are looking at the daily chart to start. The key goal pre-market is to establish parameters for the day. These are gonna be your guides, your boundaries for sort of like what you're expecting to happen in this trade. So anyways, for this trade, the first thing I'll do is mark the critical levels, like the high of the previous day, as an example, and the low of the previous day. I'll also mark the 100 simple moving average or the 100 SMA, as well as the 200 SMA. So these are just the 100 period, 200 period SMAs. Um, you should be pretty familiar with that. If you're totally new to trading, just let me know and I'll, I'll explain a lot to you, um, maybe in, in comments or somewhere else. Now the 100 simple moving average isn't too close to our trade today. So I'll kind of just make a mental note of it, but the 200 is all up in there right on this candle. So you want to know exactly where that is on the chart because you know, we're going to go from this daily view and our trading is going to happen on a three, two or five minute time frame. And so once you switch, you want to know where that the daily 200 is, because that's a very, very powerful, strong uh, level that usually when stock price interacts there, you're going to see some, some interesting action and it could, it could sway your entire decision. The last thing I'll note here is simply, I wanna know where does Roku look like it's going to open today? So essentially, as we get closer to, to 9.30 Eastern time, um, where is the pre-market price? Uh, you can't see it on the screen here, but uh, the open was 123.18, I believe. And so there's a lot of info in knowing that because you know it tells you uh, if and how the stock is gapping, right? So in this case, we have a bearish day yesterday. There's a big black candle. It's kind of a high wave candle. Um, which is an awesome candle you know it could indicate a lot of action if we were gapping above the high of it or below the low of it but we're kind of gapping right inside and then today's candle looks like it's going to open right below the close of yesterday's candle not clearing any major pivots not clearing any other you know uh, big big items on the chart so i'm not going to rush in to to just go shorting this today just because it's gapping down that doesn't make sense i mean it, it, it is gapping down and you could easily play a retest here and, and sell short but you got to realize kind of where the markets are, uh, which is very volatile, very choppy, and you're, you're gapping right into the 200 daily. So I'm just gonna be patient on this, kind of watch where it goes. Wrapping up the daily view for now then, so I'll jump into my trading time frame for the day. Okay, so now we're on the three minute chart. This is the chart I'm really gonna focus on for, for my trades. So for now, just know that, you know, we've got the two yellowish slash gold lines that you see at, uh, at 120.4 and at 129.95. These are the high and low of yesterday. We've got the red dotted line at 122.69. This was, remember the, the daily, the 200 simple moving average from the daily chart. And then we've got the, the, the two purple lines at 122.11 and 122, 124.55, which are your pre-market low and your pre-market high. This is how far it went overnight, uh, how far down it went overnight and how far up it went overnight. And obviously that's how you kind of get all the gap action that, that you know a lot of day traders like to play. So without going too much further into it, you know, we'll kind of just have, I'll have this set up for a couple stocks on the day, always trade the same five, six stocks, and then I add a few gaps, but um, you'll want to do this for all your stocks. This shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes every single morning. So let's see what happens when market opens, right? So the market opens and on the three minute chart here, uh, you know, we come up with this, this really, really huge volume candle. Uh, this is called a high wave candle, if you're not familiar. High wave is a, is a pretty powerful candle. Once you break out of that, especially with that kind of volume, you, you probably look for a retest and, and then play in the direction that it broke out. What I should point out is with the high wave candle, you can see that it's, it's almost perfectly between the, the pre-market high and the pre-market low, and it's straddling that 200 daily moving average. So the second candle comes in, volume drops pretty significantly. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't look like it wants to push through a tiny bit of a topping tail. Um, not a bunch of information here other than, you know, we, we know that pre-market high is, is, is reasonably significant so far. Then the third candle comes in, we got a big bearish candle, uh, about the same size as the second candle, almost taking it out, but not quite. So now we're going to be looking at kind of what happens next with, with volume and price. So this fourth candle comes in and it's a big black candle, closes below the low of the previous two candles, takes out the 200 daily moving average, but puts in a pretty decent bottoming tail uh, at the pre-market low, meaning there's some support here and some, some folks are got in long for sure. We got some people bu uh, buying it up down here uh, at the pre-market, right around the pre-market low of 122.11. So that, that's interesting to keep in mind. So let's take a look at the next candle and, and see what happens. So another bearish candle, it does break the low of the previous candle, but it hasn't quite closed below the low of the high wave candle, right? It, it's breached it, it's come down, it's got that huge tail going down below the, the low of the high wave candle. Um, but closing right above it. 
Uh, also kind of still straddling the pre-market low. So we kind of just want to wait here and, and see what to do. I, I want to be a little patient here. So we move on to the next candle. This one's pretty interesting because, you know, while it doesn't break the low of the candle we just looked at, it does close below the low of the, that high wave candle um, to open the day. Now that high wave candle was full of volume. Lots of people are in that candle, lots of trades in that candle, lots of shares exchanging hands in that candle. But there's also a lot of indecision in that candle. I don't think a lot of folks knew where to go to start the day, so it was all over the place. In other circumstances, you might want to, this is where you might look to go short, right? And set up a trade short. But there's a couple reasons that I don't think that would be a good idea here. One, it didn't even break the low of the previous candle. I think that's pretty important. Two, the volume on this candle decreased. There wasn't enough uh, pressure, there wasn't enough selling pressure to kind of take this any further. Now, granted, it, it did close with a shaved bottom, and that, that's usually pretty interesting, but it really didn't close uh, below the below the previous candle, and it, the volume kind of dropped off. So this wasn't sort of um, a lot of folks continuing the the, the surge down um, that we've been seeing. You're also four candles, four bearish candles into a downtrend. Uh, I'm usually not shorting four candles into a downtrend. And also the other thing to consider is you've got pretty much no risk reward. I regard the the previous, the prior day's low and the prior day's high uh, as important levels. I wouldn't consider the, the pre-market low and the pre-market high to be as formidable. They are important and I definitely respect them, but I'm not gonna take a trade right into previous day's low or previous day's high uh, unless I've got really good reason to do so. But here there's just no risk reward for it. So then, uh, you know, that being said, I'd say let's wait a little bit and what, see what happens on this next candle. And boom, instantly excited watching this candle, right? The second this comes up on my charts, I know I'm, I'm taking a trade here. Uh, I'm going to go through my mental checklist. We've got this beautiful hammer candle, which, uh, I mean, no joke, mark my words, you could literally do nothing but trade hammer candles at very important levels. And if you were disciplined enough and you didn't mess around and do other stupid stuff, you would be an absolutely profitable trader. Trading hammer candles at key levels, I mean, that's, that's, that's a moneymaker. And there's some other candles that'll do that for you too. So anyways, why am I so excited about this candle? Uh, so many reasons, right? We, we just, we, we have this huge bottoming tail right into the, the previous day's low at 120.40. Um, we, we breached the low of the previous two candles. We, we captured all the noobs who were super excited to go short. After we broke that opening highway candle, this is them going short. They sold the short all the way down to the, the previous day's low. And then it got bought up pretty aggressively. And you see the volume coming in, that volume spike is huge. And now this turns into a bullish candle. So we've got this, this beautiful bullish hammer um, with a little bit of a, you know, a, a tail on the top. There's absolutely no way I'm not getting in on this candle, right? Like that's 100% happening. Uh, this is my trade, this is my setup. Yes, I see the, uh, I see the pre-market low in front of me, but I think we can, we can break through that. Uh, I am worried about the 200 daily moving average. So that's kind of, that's gonna be a target for me and I'll be pretty active about monitoring that. Now, yeah, this doesn't look like a very a lucrative trade, you know, from the setup here. You've got an entry at 121.38, a stop at 120.25, and I'm targeting 122.75. Um, you know, typically on a day trade, I want at least 1.4, 1.5. Honestly, I usually set out to get two and you're gonna get two R trades all the time or two times your, your risk, uh, which is what I mean by two R. But on, uh, on this trade, I'm not comfortable targeting two R's. So I'm going to just target what I see here. Uh, it, it is 1.2-ish, and so I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. This next candle is awesome. Uh, you know, if, if, I, if you just took this trade bullish, right, and you saw that hammer candle, it met so many of your criteria, and you're, the first three minutes after you set your trade up, you're profitable already by a pretty decent amount. I mean, you're 15% uh, of the way into your trade already. That, that, that's a pretty beautiful thing. So, you know, the volume dropped off. I don't love, love that, but I, I do love the close of this candle, immediately trapping pretty much everybody who went short on the previous candle and pretty much anyone below that, that price. So let's move on a little bit. Uh, the next candle comes in, uh, another kind of like very uh, high wave type hammer candle. Uh, this one's great. It's retesting the high of that hammer candle that we entered on. So I really don't mind that at all. That's not a fun thing through, to hold through. So you, you're actually gonna be negative here for a second. Your PL is gonna be down on this trade, uh, but that's that's a very natural part of trading. I'm not going to do anything with this trade until it stops me out or makes a new high that I'm comfortable then moving my stop up to. So uh, I'm cool, stuck it out, and that was worthwhile because now we closed literally at the high of that previous candle. So this is beautiful. Now we go into the next candle, see what happens. So we gap down a little bit from the previous candle and just for a microsecond, we flash lower and then nothing but run up. I mean, this is bulls, all bulls the whole way. Look at the volume coming in on this candle, right? Uh, now you've got upticks in volume. It goes right through the pre-market low and closes above it. So we go to the next candle and sure enough, uh, opens right at the close of the previous candle, retests the pre-market low, runs right through our target, 
I'm out of the trade at this point. I've got my one two, uh, 1.2 times return on my money. So if you risk $100, you get $120. If you risk $200, you get $240, right? Like you're, you're getting 20% extra on top of what you risk. And so uh, this is, you know, just do the, do the math with me. We got in on that hammer candle and there's been one, two, three, four candles since then. Uh, four candles at three minutes candle is 12 minutes. So we just made 1.2 times our money in 12 minutes. On this trade, I risked 150 bucks. I'm typically risking about uh, half a percent or less uh, of my my account value when I do a, a day trade. That's just what I'm comfortable with. People are gonna do one, two percent, that's all good. Um, I like half a percent, it uh, feels good, uh, 0.25, whatever. So you made $180, right, by risking 150. So that's what a 1.2 R trade is in 12 minutes. That went right through the 200 daily moving average like it was nothing. So, you know, I'm wondering if this trade has any more legs. So let's just watch it for a little bit, see where it goes. Uh, next candle comes in, you gap up and then just immediately sell off. So you've got some folks who probably were in the same trade that I was and, and maybe just taking profits or you've got some folks who think this is a good time to go in short. The volume is quite pathetic here. Um, so that actually makes me feel like I'm about to regret my exit, right? You got the strong bull, uh, bull volume coming up and then you got this weak volume coming down. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of convicted sellers in this market. Um, there's not a ton of demand to, to go short. Uh, the, the buyers are, are still in control. Next candle comes in and wow, you've got a ton of indecision right around the pre-market low on just paltry volume. Uh, next trade comes in and bam, you've got this, um, this wide ranging uh, bullish candle closes above that the previous candle. The volume isn't great, but I do like sort of what I'm seeing here. Again, it closes above the 200 daily moving average. Let's fast forward a bit. And the next candle, another white candle, increasing volume, close, taking out all those highs. Um, so now, I mean, you're you're probably in this to win this if, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't checking shit like myself and, and closed that at 1.2. And notice before we go any further here, we, we broke through the pre-market on that bullish uptrend and then came back and retested it on the very next candle and then uh, two candles later. That's that's almost picture perfect. You want to, to, to have retest is a very natural part of a trade. The fact that it's doing that and it's behaving so nicely and it's it's retracing and doing all that makes me want to be in, not out. Too bad, I'm out. I just got to sit out and watch it just like we're all doing right now. Fast forward, we got this type of indecision candle right here, a massive volume. So when you've got that kind of volume coming in and the trade goes nowhere, you pretty much know it's gonna probably do something important here in the next one or two candles. If it's, you know, it's either consolidating till it hits some reason to move up or down or it's it's about to kind of like burst. So next candle is another gorgeous hammer candle right down to the 200 daily moving average. You literally could not plan that any better. You could almost trade this candle um, and still get another one, 1 1.2 just on this candle alone. You could literally trade this and make one to 1.2 to 1.3 times your money without even getting into the pre-market high, which is insane. And so let's see what happens next. And there you go. That's it. I mean, so a couple things here. One, I could have taken my original trade way past two times my return. So I could have taken whatever, let's say you were, you risk $500 a trade. You would have easily made a thousand plus if you would have taken all the way pre-market high. I don't have the, the guts to do that. I'm going to the 200 moving average because just through my experience, I've always, I've learned to respect that, uh, that, that line pretty significantly. Um, also though, you could have gotten in two other times in this trade and still made either two to one on your money or 1.2, 1.3 on your money. This second hammer retesting the pre-market high, that's a beautiful place to get in. I would have done that all day. It takes out the low of this candle. People are trapped. You're, you're making money. This candle right here, uh, another hammer candle right down to 200. You could take this, ride it up to the pre-market. You do want to exit though. I mean, this thing's now, you know, five, six, seven, eight white candles um, up to the pre-market high. There's a lot of folks uh, kind of in strong. Take your profits, go home, go do something else, be happy, whatever. You probably are at home. That's where you trade, I'm guessing. But anyways, um, just take your profits, be happy. You don't want to be in this one too long. And as we click through here, next couple candles, um, you'll start to see a lot of consolidation up here and a lot of topping tails. This tells me that the pre-market high uh, is not going to be broken or at least doesn't want to be broken um, without putting up a fight. And then we'll just kind of let this play through and you can watch how the, the price action plays out while we go through some other points here. But sometimes you will take this exact trade and you will get stopped out and it'll be great because then the trade goes the wrong way the whole time and you feel good about your stop. And sometimes you'll get stopped out and this trade will work without you. And you know, it's gonna happen. But the, the, the point is if you have a plan and you have some discipline, that'll keep you in, this, in the markets profitably and far ahead of almost anybody else who's day trading, right? 80% of folks 
are average and average traders just don't make any money. There's a lot I glanced over here in this, uh, in this video. If you have any questions, please hit me up, leave a comment, message me, I don't really care. I, I love to answer these questions. I love talking about this stuff all day. And yeah, I'll see you next time for another uh, awesome trade review.